it. Now, remember I said that you should wedge it a couple times, especially if you can see that somebody has been using it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, um, you know, it needs a little bit of mixing. So just push it down on the table, knead it a couple times. Does anybody remember what this is called? It starts with a W. Wedge. Wedging. Good. Good. Just a couple times. Don't want to do it too much or it'll dry out. Then just kind of pat it into a ball with the heel of your hand and you can throw it down on the table a couple times just to even it out. Don't throw it too hard. It'll make a really loud noise and scare everybody. Alright, now what do you think the first step is to making a pot? Yeah, so we're going to make what's called a base. So you take your rolling tool. Now there's something really, really important to do here. You're going to roll and then you're going to pick it up. What happens if you don't pick it up and move it? It'll stick and you'll get really frustrated. So pick it up and rotate it every couple ones. Also be careful that you're using even pressure because if you push too hard in one spot, you're going to make a divot. Okay, so make nice, even pressure. Yeah, someone had a door. Um, you can just leave them right on the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And also, if you rotate it, then it'll stay more of a circle instead of a long shape. You can also turn it over. Now, if it looks really like cracked up and ratchet on the other side, use um, a rib, either the rubber type or the metal rib. There's a metal rib in your skin. Okay, thank you. So either the rubber or the metal. If you just curve either one a little bit, so hold it like that or like this, and just pull it across. And this goes for any time you need to smooth a flat surface. Look how much smoother that is. Same thing with the metal. Will work too. Not that that's truly like necessary but if it's like really cracky just give it a quick all right now this is about as thin as you want to go so don't go too much thinner because it'll be weak and wobbly now there is a container up front on the floor of all kinds of different round shapes what do you use these for Crazy. yeah just to cut it out like a cookie cutter so or you could freehand it if you don't need it or you could do a different shape besides a circle not saying that you have to do a circle. Depends on your idea. So you're going to cut it out. What's this tool called? Cutter. Cutter. Thing. What does it look like? A pen. A pen. A, a needle. It's a needle tool. A needle. needle tool. And if you cut this right here, and you can pull this up. Yep. You can also use um, this tool for cutting, obviously. It's a knife. Okay. So I've got my base. Now what do I actually use to build? What shape? Whales. Now I did um, mention another building technique. Who remembers what that is? Slap. And what did I just do? Make a slab. So technically a coil pot still has a slab base. So to make a coil, now I'm going to make it look really easy because I've done this for years and years but it's actually a little bit tricky, it takes a little bit of practice, so don't feel like if your first couple coils aren't as perfect as mine, don't feel bad about yourself, okay? Take some practice and you'll get it, and I'll help you. So just squeeze about that much clay into a log, okay? Now the trick to coils is to push out, not down. What happens if you push down on something? It squishes it. Yeah, it's gonna be flat coil, and it's not gonna work for your purposes. So you're gonna push out, and you're gonna use your whole hand. It even helps to be standing up. All right, now I can kind of feel with my hand that this side 
is a little bit thinner than this side. Can you see that? So I can feel that with my hand. So I'm going to use a little bit more pressure on that side and even it out. Now if it does happen to get flat, sometimes it happens even if you're pushing out. So if it starts to look like that, sometimes you can save it if you just whack it a little bit, like the opposite way on the table. Sometimes it's not savable, but you know you can use that technique. Okay. So this right here is a perfect coil. Okay? Good width. Don't want to go too much thinner. Okay? You can go a little fatter if you'd like. It's a good coil. You can roll yourself a couple at once if you want, or you can go coil by coil. I usually do one coil at a time because I don't like it when my coils dry out if they're sitting there because they'll be a little bit harder to bend. They'll crack. So how do I attach it? Do I just smush it on there? No. What do I do? I don't, I don't know what it's called. Scoring. Scoring and slipping. Okay, good. So we're going to score. Notice how deep I'm going. I'm not doing these little weak scratches. I'm getting in there and I'm causing some havoc. So if you're doing it deep enough, you should get these little burrs of clay. That's normal. Pretty close together, pretty deep. Notice when I get to the end, I'm going to go back and do it the opposite way, like cross hatching. Now, what do I do? Okay, Catherine. So, this is the slip. It's simply wet clay paste, and you're going to apply it wherever you scored. Not like a huge puddle on the table, but you can see enough to kind of fill the cracks most of the way. Okay, now I take my coil, put it right on top, and I'm going to push firmly down. Push firmly enough so you see the slip squeeze out a little. Now when you get to the end here, you don't have to stop, you can just keep on going right on top of there. And that's a good start. I'm going to roll another coil. Do I have to score before I attach this one? Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't. You don't have to score after every coil. You want to stop and score about every three coils. Let's do a couple more. talk about that. What are you making? I'm just making a pot. Okay. Now, TJ asked a great question. How do you make it go out or in? How do you manipulate the shape? Does anybody have a guess? Putting it on. Well, what is simple? All you gotta do is gradually place your coils. So, if I wanted to go out, I would roll my coil slightly more to the outside. If I wanted it to start choking in, I'd place it slightly more towards the inside. The only thing you gotta be careful about is that you don't change too suddenly. Because remember, this is wet, malleable clay in greenware stage. It's got a lot of water in it. So it can't take a whole lot of weight. So if you say, oh, I want my, my pot to start coming out like a bowl, and you go a little OD and you're like, bam, it's out, beautiful. Well, it'll be all good until you have about two more coils. And then it's gonna start going, and it's gonna fall. And it's going to be all like not strong and not cute. It's going to be all wobbly and wibbly. Wibbly. So, you can do it. Just be more gradual. Just do a little bit at a time. So, if you're building out, 
but more like that, very gradual and very slow. Now, if you have a really sudden extreme change, then I can work with you to help you figure it out. Mostly it's gonna entail us letting this part dry a little bit before we attach the next coil. Then it has more strength. But in general, if you go gradual, you'll be fine. And notice this doesn't really matter like where one ends. Like if you have a crack, you know, that's not a big deal. It won't matter at all. So don't worry about that. And if I have a little chunk missing, ta-da! It's very forgiving. Okay. Now I have about three, four coils now. So now I'm going to stop and do what? Smooth it. Smooth it. Very good. Now there's a variety of smoothing tools. These kind of tools, the wooden ones, are all smoothing tools. Now you'll find your favorite, try different ones, see what you like. Um, I like this one, or let me see how My favorite is actually the one that's a little bit wider. Something more like that is my favorite. But you try different things, experiment. Now, I want you to smooth the inside definitely, and 95% of the time you're going to smooth the outside too, unless you're doing something with exposed quail. So when you smooth, I like to do the outside first, I don't know why. But you're going to support the inside with your other hand. So our pot is pretty small right now, so it can be up like this. So if you can do it without messing up your pot, I like to hold it up a little bit. But if it's too big or it's too fragile, you can still do it like this right on the table. So you're going to support the inside and you're just going to smooth. So all we're doing right now is we're grabbing that excess roundness of the coils and pushing it into the cracks. So I'm being really careful not to make the walls thinner. Okay, look, my walls are still thick. You're not pinching them thin. And that's a big um, mistake that happens is that you're like, I don't need no tool. Look, I can just smush them together. I can smooth them with my fingers. Look, I'll put some slip on it. Well, guess what? It's going to all of a sudden look like this. And it's going to be really weak because you're going to be putting slip on it to fill in the cracks. No, don't do that. It will completely collapse on you. Instead, keep the thickness of your wall the whole time and use your tool whichever one you pick. All right, so that's about the level of smoothness that we're looking for in this stage. So notice it's not like completely perfect. Save the rest of the finishing for later. As long as the cracks are filled in and you don't see any like dents, like if you saw something like Like you can still see the dent a little bit, push it a little farther, make it a little bit smoother. But once those dents are full, then that's good for now. Then you can keep building. But you should do, also do the inside. Now I like to like support the outside while I do the inside. And I'm going to use a smaller tool because it's a smaller space. Especially if you have a smaller base, you're going to have to really get in there. It's really important to do this now while you can reach it better. Pay special attention to that first coil that touches the base. Grab a little bit of clay and pull it down. See how I'm pulling it? Yep. So that there's no crack between that first coil and the base. Alright, so sometimes you go left and right, sometimes you go up and down. whatever you think it needs. Is the width of my pot still okay? Yep, perfect. Okay, now at this stage you can take your finger and just do a final little sweep. And I use my thumb a lot and I'll pull with my thumb to get any final little things. Alright, so we've got a smooth inside, smooth outside, still thick on the wall. 
Notice how I really didn't have to use any slip. Some students, they OD on the slip and they just want to like coat it and start rubbing it all over. But um, that's fun for a minute, but then all of a sudden your pot, you look back and it's crumbled into a big wet mess. The more water you introduce, the weaker the pot becomes. You want as little water as you can get by with it. All right, now, of course, guys, you'd be doing this on the whole pot. I just did one little section, okay? Now, when you go to build again, what do you do? Score. score. So you're going to score right on top of this last coil. Now think about like your schedule for the day, like at around 2.10, you know, when you finish working for the day. Don't like, don't leave a whole bunch of exposed coils without smoothing them for the day. So like at two o'clock-ish, make sure that your coils that you've been building with are smooth. That was a confusing way to say, like just make sure that you don't leave a whole bunch of coils without smoothing them because they'll dry out and it'll be really hard to smooth when you come back the next class. Okay. Apply your slip. And keep building. Now I've just made a simple shape here. If you're if your base was say like a figure eight, then you'd be working with your coils in that shape. If you wanted to do an angular box shape, you could start with a square base and cut your coils so that it's perfect edges. There's many different variations. I'm just doing one basic shape, but don't feel like you're constrained to that. Also, don't feel like that there's not a lot you can do with this basic shape to differentiate it from everybody else's. So even though you start with something basic, there's a ton of things you can do to it later. So don't feel like you know you have to go super fancy on the structure. You could go simple and fancy it up later. You can attach stuff later. So you know don't feel limited whether you do you know a simple thing or a little bit more fancy. There's lots of different options. So that's how you would do it. You just keep building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now don't worry if your coils like have a little bit of cracks or indentations. I mean, as long as it's not like super cracky, like the whole coil is cracking apart, then you should be okay. If it gets, you know, to a point where it's cracking a lot and you're having trouble smoothing, you can use a little bit of slip to help you with that. Just don't coat it. Now if you feel in your coils, sometimes this happens, if you feel like there's a hollow spot, what should you do? Poke it. Poke it. You could poke it. Yeah. But is that like sure? I would just crumple it up and make a new coil if you feel a hollow spot in the coil. So here, yeah, feel that. See how it feels like air? That's because I was using reused clay and I just smushed it really fast instead of like making sure that it was all out. So if you feel air in your coil, just smush it and make a new coil. All right, let me see if there's some more tools I wanna to talk about. So we talked about the needle tool for scoring. The knife tool can also be used for scoring. I don't like it quite as much because it sometimes goes too deep, but it can be used if you're gentle. You can use this to cut, of course. You can use this curved one later for trimming the rim. Um, miscellaneous wooden tools are all for smoothing. You've got your rolling pin for your base or if you have any other slab type stuff you need to do. Boys, pick your heads up, jeez. Um, the wooden spoons are for something later, so don't worry about them yet. Does anybody remember what they're for? That's a very good guess because I did say metal spoons for burnishing. But these, when this pot is leather hard, you're going to beat your pot with the spoon. Now it's sticking right now because it's wet, but when this is leather hard, it won't stick. 
it'll just smooth it out really good, make it even. Um, scraping, you can use the yellow or the metal ribs, and you can use these for cleanup, among other things. So at the end of the day, you're going to have these little pieces here, okay? These are not trash, and they're not to be thrown on the floor. You're going to scrape it. And then do what? Very good. You can put it right in the slip. And it'll go right back down after an hour or so into slip. Now please be conscientious about the tools. This is actually like too dirty. This should have been scraped. So again, take a scraper or some other tool and just, if it has a bunch of dried clay on it, just give it a quick scrape into the slip bucket doesn't have to be completely clean, just clean enough for somebody to use it next. You don't want a bunch of caked up stuff on your tools, so try to be conscientious about the next person, okay? So you're going to scrape your table, then you're going to get a sponge from the sink and give it a quick wipe. If you have excess clay of this size, what should you do with it, you think? Put it back in the bag. Now, one thing I will ask you guys to do is break it up a little bit into about this size pieces because I spray it with the water and after a couple hours, it'll go back to nice and soft. But if it's like a big dry hunk, it, it's harder to you know bring it back. So just break it up a little bit smaller for me if you have extra clay at the end of the class. Okay, um, I think that's about it for our demo. So look at your prep sheet with me. That's good.